Let's return now to what's happening in Venezuela. Live from NPR News in Washington, the White House is calling for a peaceful transfer of power in Venezuela. I'd like to begin by sending our prayers to the people of Venezuela in their righteous struggle. Act now. Victory is within your grasp. Which has the, the fingerprints of the U.S. and particularly the CIA. Supervised by an international uh, committee. Patriots. The military and the intelligence services who had reached the conclusion that the Maduro regime is bringing nothing but disaster. What we have is Maduro is a leading a drug cartel, which is the number one provider of narcotics to the United Kingdom. Authoritarian nation that's propped up by Cuba, propped up by Russia, propped up by China. Played a very significant role in propping up Maduro. To portray himself as a sort of pillar of anti-imperialist strength. The U.S., Cuba, Russia, and, and to some extent China are all involved in this. The promise that uh, the end is near. It's gonna happen. The Maduro government says that he was elected. Free and fair elections as people dealing with the opposition. Maduro can say that this is a matter of foreign interference. It's this foreign presence that sits on top of the military. And pull on a long history of U.S. intervention. A contest between the democratic uh, model of governance and an authoritarian model. It's an idea of supporting their, uh, the, the change in, in power. From Maduro to Guaido. Juan Guaido is the opposition leader who the U.S. and other countries recognize. Guaido is recognized by the U.S. and more than 50 other nations as Venezuela's legitimate leader. Oh, President Juan Guaido is the constitutional leader. And, uh, Juan Guaido is risking everything. Juan Guaido has called for an escalating series of strikes. Well, the key thing is Guaido wants a general strike. Final push for regime change. He called for a series of stoppages leading up to a general strike. He called on key figures in the Maduro regime who have been in touch with the opposition to step up and move Maduro out of power. What Mr. Guaido is calling the final phase of Operation Freedom. In the video, he calls on all Venezuelans to support his drive to end Maduro's rule. And you have a few militaries uh, on this video showing support of Guaido. And showing him with some soldiers and armored vehicles. He said there would be acts of protests every day until Venezuela was free. Millions of Venezuelans will continue to be on the street and more defections are to come. Mr. Guaido says that an important element of the armed forces is now backing his plan to oust uh, President Maduro. We'll put him out of action. And I think this is the first time that we're actually seeing that it is, it is in fact, and there is in fact, a division, a crack inside of the military. It does seem like that. Yes, and um, certainly it looks as if some military officials have come over onto his side. So if you're Nicolas Maduro, can you look at your defense minister anymore and trust him? If this effort fails, uh, they will sink into a dictatorship that is in complete disarray. I mean, I meant what, what's been happening this week. You have big demonstrations in favor of Guaido. People who are in the front line taking on the security forces of Maduro. Everybody who supports freedom for Venezuela. Patriots. Tell them to act now. Not just for freedom, but for our very law. And I want to stress again, it's particularly important now that all of you speak to those in the military and the regime who can make a difference. What you see is what you're seeing around the globe, a contest between between the democratic uh, model. That the top officials of this regime had reached the conclusion that Maduro had to go. By allegations by a senior U.S. official. So we know that this is going. Now, the oh, military, yeah, can I just can I... they did not fire on us. Yeah. Can I so just... we, we have such weakness, and we know we can take it all the way. Uh, ju just on some of the military top boss and senior figures. The fact is, key figures like the defense minister, the chief judge of the Supreme Court, the head of the presidential guard. Right. These are three people who agreed with Juan Guaido. Do not forget that they operate in a state of terror. And that in itself is going to make a transition much harder because it makes it impossible for the people's voice to be heard. Mr. Guaido told the crowds that came out today that while the definitive phase of what he calls Operation Freedom began yesterday with the armed forces, now it's the turn of government workers. The, the, the protests have changed in character. In the sense that clearly um, what happened yesterday, whatever the original plan was, did not work. It doesn't look very well organized. People are still only waking up in Venezuela. And there's a wider, a growing threat of wider violence. And today you have a, this uprising. The military uprising is only in Caracas or inside of the country. Even as violence broke out in the streets today in Caracas, it was part of the campaign to force President Nicolas Maduro to relinquish power. And we're negotiating with Guaido and his people 
over a plan. The transfer of power from Nicolas Maduro to the interim president, Guaido. The Venezuelan opposition leader, Juan Guaido. And even though Maduro didn't leave the country as he was planning to do because of Russian advice. President Maduro is striking a defiant note. Maduro is now surrounded by scorpions in a bottle. Typically about Nicolas Maduro himself. We haven't seen him so far today. Defending Venezuela sovereignty and tapping into a long tradition of anti-imperialism. I mean, he himself has said that this is all fake news and he's accused the U.S. of trying to sow division within the country. And I mean, others have said this is part of the sort of game of psychological warfare. That this is not some kind of psyop by the United States. This happened. So that's one aspect to take a look at. This is a situation that is unfolding as we speak. Just, to, just, to, just, just in summary, you're, you're clear that this is the final push. And we don't know what plans that the Guaido and the Leopoldo Lopez have for today. But despite trying to rally the crowds, his attempt so far to get rid of Mr. Maduro has failed. I mean, it's been a complete mess. It's woefully incompetent when you think about it. It's not very... it doesn't look very well organized. It has not been a mass defection. I and mean, then it's probably set back the opposition's cause, hasn't it? This would really deflate the whole opposition campaign. Venezuela has been a complete mess for a very long time now. Venezuela government, the government that is of Nicolás Maduro, rather than the one of Juan Guaidó. Juan Guaidó, the opposition, is recognized, as you know, by many countries. Saying, uh, freedom, freedom. On some hardcore demonstrators who remained through the afternoon. By that time, in the capital Caracas, many people had already headed home. The government, which also staged protests today, says the armed forces remain loyal to the president. Venezuela's defense minister said, said you know, it would be an indignity to think that we, we could have been bought. Some believe that Venezuelan soldiers could be bought as if they were mercenaries. This is the man, the defense minister, who the Americans were saying had been talking to the opposition. Without senior officers defecting to the opposition, regime change is unlikely. So if that was the case, it seems to have backfired. He certainly did. The Venezuelans woke up after their May Day protests to, uh, to see this show of strength from President Maduro visiting a main army base in Caracas and marching together with the soldiers, saw it on their TV screens. <laughs> This is what Venezuelans woke up to a day after the massive protests. President Maduro in a show of strength, surrounded by troops at the Caracas military base. A los traidores, to the traitors, detain them. To the coup plotters, reject them and detain them as well. And to the armed forces, unified, cohesive, under the command of our laws and constitution. Como si fuésemos mercenarios. Is military action still on the table? It's only a matter of time. And it would be odd if the most powerful country in the world that happens to be in the same neighborhood doesn't have a point of view on all this. Patriots.